joining me for a, an impromptu video. Now, I am by myself. Um, usually I like to film with Sarah, but today was an impromptu little get ready with me. I was doing more of an extreme Halloween look. Um, as you can see by my shirt, I am a member of the Barberton Area JCs here in Ohio. And it's a volunteer organization. They do a lot of great work in our community. And tonight we were volunteering our services as face painters for a fall family fun night. And um, I really wanted to bring the spirit in, so I decided to do a really intricate Halloween look. And, you know, I had a lot of people interested in seeing it, so I'm gonna try to get it up as soon as possible. Um, I'm sorry the intro is a little more casual. I do have company coming over later today, so um, I am going to try to hurry up and get everything recorded quickly. Um, one thing to note with this look is, you know, it is very nice, but, um, I didn't use traditional Halloween or costume makeup to do this. I own so many eyeshadows, so much makeup, that um, for me to do a look on myself, it's relatively silly for me to invest in something for special occasions, unless I'm gonna be doing it on somebody else. So I decided to challenge myself to do all my Halloween looks with the shadows and products that I currently own. Because in all honesty, I'm really not gonna use them up in time. They're probably gonna spoil before I even hit pan on some of these shades. So yeah, you're gonna see me put eyeshadow in weird places. You're even gonna probably see me use like cream lipsticks in weird ways, you know, hint, hint. And um, yeah, so it might not be how I would do it on somebody else, but yeah, it could be if you have a bunch of these products and they're just sitting around and you're not using them. Yeah, go ahead, play with how you put them on and um, you might just enjoy what you get. So yeah, let's just get to it. So here I am getting ready to volunteer to paint faces. It's something I used to do as a child to make money during yard sales and it was really something I quickly learned I was good at. So I decided to, you know, really vamp it up and get me in the mood I wanted to go ahead and do a really intricate look, you know, one that most people wouldn't attempt. So I put a lot of thought into it and decided that a half skull, half glam look would be absolutely perfect because, you know, it would show off my normal makeup skills, but then, you know, obviously you'll give it that ghoulish touch. So I'm just applying my foundations and concealers to my eyelid and face in my usual method. The only thing I didn't do this time was put on any um, oil resistant primers like my um, NYX Angel Veil. The main reason why is I knew I was going to be packing on a lot of powder, especially on the skull side of the face. So I really wasn't concerned with oils pinking through. So I just went ahead and skipped that step and my thought was also to you know, save me some steps with washing. And um, one thing you might notice is that I am really ramping up the contrast in terms of my contour. Now, I really don't think my face needs much contour, but in this look, I was putting so much of a contrast between the glam and the skull that I really wanted to take it to that next level. So I went ahead and went full bore on it, way darker than you probably ever see me do it before. And um, I was actually really pleased with the look. It didn't look as autumn-y as uh, you know, it had in the past, but I think it's because I've been practicing more. And yeah, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about Halloween and makeup. Uh, go ahead and comment down below. I know a lot of people um, either embrace it or just absolutely, you know, run the other direction, which I think is kind of interesting. I always take it as a risk-taking opportunity. You know, you really can't do anything wrong with makeup during Halloween because you could just claim it's part of the costume or part of the look and really just go outside your comfort zone. So. That is one reason why I am so excited to be having the collection that I have this time around for October. And um, as you heard me mention in the intro, I really, really, really wanted to avoid buying any special costume makeup. You know, with all the palettes I'm using, 
Nowadays, I have so many colors that it really would be a shame to just go buy it in a special cream form or an easier wash to wash off form. So I decided to pack everything on and with this look in particular, I went and pulled out every single one of my Kat Von D palettes, which I own the Shade and Light, the Metal Matte, Pastel Goth, and the new Saint and Sinner. So that really gave me a great range of colors and I knew all the shadows would be similar consistency, so that also helped too. And these colors might seem interesting to you, but I am not always into ghoulish Halloween looks. I'm actually very much into the cartoony side of things. So with the glam look, I wanted to bring in my absolute favorite colors. Back in the day, everything was orange and black, but you know, probably about 10 years ago, they started bringing green, purple, and pink, you know, into traditional Halloween garb. And I absolutely loved it. It's these bright pops of color. They can be used in anything from Frankenstein skin to a witch's costume, you know, absolutely anything. So I wanted to bring that playfulness of the more modern Halloween out in this look. And I'm really going ham on the eyes. I really want the stark contrast between a fully contoured glam eye and the soon to come black abyss that will be my other socket. So I am just really paying attention to all the details, doing all the tight lining, and yeah, just really going at it. And I even curled my lashes, which is another thing you guys um, don't get to see me do. And later on, you'll see me put on false lashes. I had them sitting here in front of me, but I could not find my lash glue. And when I was digging for a special pencil later on, I, it fell in my lap. So I decided to pop them on and you know really emphasize that glam to skull contrast so now i'm going to really start focusing what i'm doing in the video and talking technically about my thought process because this is where it obviously deviates from the normal makeup tutorial so what i'm doing is mapping out the areas i want black with a white liner. This is a cheapo one from LA Colors, so it serves a purpose well, and I don't feel like I'm wasting you know, good quality makeup. And I am just you know, trying to feel my bone structure through my own skin to kind of guess where some of these um, landmarks might be, like the hollow of the cheeks and the socket of the eye. And yeah, that is what you think it is. That is a tube of white cream lipstick. My kids had gotten a hold of it and destroyed it, but I held on to it, you know, thinking I might be able to use it for something. And, you know, when I was trying to think of what I had as a um, creamy texture that would lighten my skin to give the powder something that I'm gonna pack on to later and hold on, um, this turned out to be perfect. So I just brushed that uh, white lipstick all over my cheeks and face. Um, I'm not worried about any reactions. I've overdrawn my lips and put this outside it before. That tends to be the one of the more sensitive areas on my face. So it obviously held up and did its job of holding onto the powder. And now I'm taking um, black with uh, various tools uh, depending on how detailed I wanted to get and filling in those areas. And this is where it starts to get very um, painterly for me. I'm going in with various colors to create depth. Here I'm using a reddish brown to emphasize the barrier between my skin and the skull, and then taking like a contour shade and like making it feel like it's raised in those areas. And once that easy part was done. This is where I kind of get into the weeds with shading. Um, you can really get lost and hyper focus on this process. So what I tend to do is jump around a lot so I don't overwork one area too much. And I start with my lightest gray shadow, which is in the pastel goth palette. And I start putting it in areas where I think I want a shadow. I typically don't draw skulls 
So even though I'm very familiar with faces, the topography of a skull is actually slightly different. You don't have any flesh filling out areas. So I'm just really trying to guess. And so yeah, I'm hopping around different areas, packing on various shades of white and gray to kind of get an idea of the structure I want to create. And yeah, you just literally need to like stop a moment back away work somewhere else because it can really really get bogged down and overworked and that's why you see me go from spot to spot and I even stop shading when I feel like I'm getting frustrated with the process and I'll start doing hyper detail work in the areas I know I want to focus on so that I can see how it's going to work in the overall piece and I do go back in a little bit later to shade some of those areas, but right now I'm just working on finer details. I do put foundation on my lower jaw on some of that red brown so that it ties in together. So as I mentioned, I love neon pink with Halloween, so I grab the brightest pink shade I have and pop it on my lips. I went ahead and used a matte so that I can shade some shadow around into it without really getting it all gooped up. And I decided that even if I had just a scowl on one side, I would make it glow. So I popped on some of that Laura Geller to give a little bit of sheen to that very exposed cheekbone and I believe that wraps up the look. And I really hope you enjoyed that quick little tutorial. Um, uh, what you see right now, obviously the house is darker. Um, it's about six hours later so even though I didn't use professional costume makeup that's meant to last it did hold up really really well and I was outside in 80 degree weather sweating like a dog painting dozens and dozens of people's faces so yeah um, you'll be surprised what you can get with the makeup you already currently own so I hope this inspires you to play and get a little more creative and we will see you in the next video